Hello YouTube, this is Salam. In this video I will show you how I made all these tables. They're very simple to make, cheap. I made them from scrap metal I have or leftover metal. Uh, these over here I use one sheet of plywood. I made this table, it's double decker, you can store stuff here and here. This one over here you could use it for uh, writing or reading or laptop etc. Uh, I made these several years back for the garden and they've been outside in the element and they uh, been doing okay and I also made this uh, welding table or cart several years back uh, I'm gonna post as many pictures and video as I have hopefully it will give you idea if you want to build your own table or cart and please enjoy the video I cut all the steel and I grinded the corner so everything fit perfectly and I could weld it easy this is galvanized square tubing 18 gauge very lightweight it welds just fine with the flex core I tacked it in place and I make sure it is square and parallel uh, both sides I added more weld to it to steady it. I elected to do it on the floor because I could capture better image and also to encourage somebody if they don't have welding table, they could do the same work on the garage floor or uh, the patio floor. Here I'm doing the other side, follow the same steps. Those magnets I bought from Harbor Freight, they're not strong to hold the metal together square, but they help. I have another brand I use at the shipping container. Uh, I think I bought them from eBay, and they have stronger magnets than these. But these will do the job. It's very important to uh, keep measuring to make sure to maintain squareness. This will minimize the grinding and other problem you run to. Just a small tack and as you see they perfectly parallel to each other and they square. And this is how I did the uh, other side that connect the two sides together. I'm using the magnets and I square them. As you saw, the magnet is not very strong. I tacked it in place on the top part. Made sure it's square. Added more weld. Then I did the bottom side. I'm making sure the height of this uh, runner match the other side. As you saw, just little bit tack. Make sure everything's square, adjust it. You could move it if you have a small tack, but if you put uh, a bigger welding pass, it's be hard to move the metal. You will have to grind it and then redo it. But just put in a small tack just to keep everything together. You could adjust it, you could move it, and then once you satisfy, add more weld. And then once you completely satisfy with it and you already tacked it in several spots, then you could go ahead and weld it all the way. These comments is only meant for new welders. If you expert welder, you already know that.
make sure everything is flat and square and I'm actually just doing that to show you because the tape measure will give you better reading I always prefer and if possible to use the flat position when I weld I prefer this over vertical weld or overhead the weld will look nicer and thinner when you grind it especially for a project like this that's why I'm using the ladder Welding in general produces toxic fume, especially galvanized steel. I always prefer to weld outdoor. Even though it was windy that day, the flux core did excellent job. I'm using the flap disc. And always make sure before you do any uh, disc changing or any maintenance to the grinder to have it disconnected because it's very dangerous tool. I removed the welding spatter and I'm also roughing the galvanize so when I paint it the paint will adhere to it. There is special treatment when you paint galvanized metal but I found out if you just rough it with the grinder and then you clean it real good with acetone make sure it's dry and use very thin film of paint that match the galvanize you will be fine the paint won't come off and it will stay there and it will protect the metal where you grind it from rusting in addition to what I'm doing to rough the surface or the galvanized surface you could use a wire cup that attached to the grinder and you will uh, hit all the surfaces this way it will be rough enough for the paint to adhere you can also use sandpaper and just go over it with sandpaper you can also if you don't have uh, acetone you could use any type of detergent or degreaser and wash it with water and immediately dry it with a dry rag so it doesn't build any film of rust and when completely dry then you could paint it I cut these over here and I'm gonna weld them on the corner I ground it over here so when I weld and then I ground it, it's going to be flat so I don't have to weld it from the other side where it's hard to reach with the grinder and I'm just hold it with the magnet till I tack it. I also cut smaller pieces over here. I have six for top and six for, for the bottom out of these. They just inch and a quarter by inch and a quarter. I also going to drill a hole in the center. These I could weld from top and bottom because I could hit them easily with the grinder. I'm just holding them like this with the magnets so they be flush. I don't want to drill hole in these to be able to uh, bolt the piece of wood to the table because I want it to stay smooth over here at this edge or this side.
and I'm going to proceed and do all of them. very lightweight all this square tubing is 18 gauge I drilled this and now I'm ready to uh, dry it with some acetone and paint it.
I'm using the spray paint to paint over the galvanized steel after I roughed it and dried it. It's close match to the galvanized so if the metal gets scratched you won't be able to notice it. I'm just applying a thin film of paint to make sure it cover everything. I found out thin film of paint it will make it last longer and it won't be off like thick paint would. This my seven and a quarter inch skill saw I use it to cut wood and steel. I actually use this skill saw to cut the metal for this table. And now I need to change the disc so I could cut the plywood. The teeth always need to point the direction of the skill saw. They always have arrow, either here or here. And there is a latch on all skill saw to lock it while you tied I need nice finish so I'm using the finish cutting disc for plywood I'm using these scrap pieces of wood to space the plywood above the concrete floor and I'm going to set the depth of the skill saw so it won't hit the concrete while I'm cutting the plywood I have inch and a half from here to here so I'm gonna set an edge so I could cut straight and I'm gonna back it off inch and a half Now I need to cut it this way. This is the bottom shelf and I need to cut for the legs.
and I'll finish it off with this. I don't have a lot of wood tools. Don't do this at home. I'm using new flapper disc. I removed the guard so I could have the freedom of sanding this without having the guard scratching the wood. I will be very careful. I have my uh, face mask. This is the bottom surface. I'm just gonna sand this with some sandpaper. That's all the sanding that's going to get. This is the top of the table and I want the corner rounded because it's going to stick outside of the metal frame. So I'm using this electric tape. I'm going to paint both pieces with this.
I painted both sides yesterday and it's dry. It's rough little bit from the first coat. I'm gonna smooth it up with the 500 grit sandpaper. And then I put another coat on top of it. This will not take time to dry. It will take about an hour and you could flip it. So I'm gonna paint the other piece and wait a couple hours then flip it and sand the other side and paint it. I put the finish side on foam and then I set the metal on top of it. I center it all the way around and I held it with four screws in the corner. And then this piece, I enter it like this and then I lift it up and I held it with four screws on the corner too. It's solid. These are the screws that I'm using. The next size, it's about 316 taller so it will penetrate through the wood. I'm gonna go ahead and install the rest of the screws. It came out pretty good, very strong, and I was able to use one piece of plywood to make this table, and I have extra piece right here. I'm going to make another smaller table. Give me five. Good, yeah.
I painted the surface yesterday and it's dry and I centered the frame around the plywood and I'm going to bolt it in place. These are small tables they made from square tubing and I just glued the tile to the frame and it's been very strong it's outside like I said before and still good I acquired this large hydraulic tank and I made my welding cart out of it. I use these tools to cut the sides. I basically convert it to like 3x3 three three frame. And all the pieces that I cut, I use them for other projects, the 11 gauge sheet metal. All this scrap metal. As you see the bottom side or what's going to be the welding table. It's supported by a flat stock. And that made it strong. And I cut those uh, wood to space the middle shelf. I used the flux core to weld and patch all the old holes. And I added casters so I could move the stable around easy. I use a flat stock to support the middle shelf. It's one inch by quarter inch thick. That's strengthen the middle shelf. I also added a flat stock all the way around the welding surface of this car. I ground it where I'm going to weld so the weld will penetrate deep and when I ground it flat it will maintain its strength. And now I'm making the handle over here. I use an old piece of flat stock I round it to match the pipe I used and then I weld it to the cart. I painted my welding cart, it looks real good and with this minimal amount of tools I was able to build many projects. I hope you enjoyed this video, thank you for watching and I'll see you later.